This is me, 24 years ago. <laughs> and it was a pretty nice place over there. My parents were there because they were doing development work. My father actually started a little company to employ local people. And these local people eventually took over the company and still run it up to this day. What was nice about growing up there was that I got to see these kinds of animals. I took this picture, it was the first picture I took of Rhino, and it, it really shows how amazing this place is. I can see in this picture that this rhino is at peace at this place. It's not like if you're going to a zoo, that you always know that he's not supposed to be there, that animal. And here, you know he's at home. And that makes it such a beautiful place. It makes it a place that I want to show my children, and I want your children to have that chance as well. Unfortunately, this is maybe not possible anymore. Because what is happening? In Southeast Asia, people want the horn of the rhino. And this horn is worth so much money that they are prepared to kill for it. A kill in South Africa and other African countries. This horn is so worth so much to them because they think it's a medicine, maybe it can cure even hangovers. And up to this point, it has become, from a medicine, it has started to grow to be a status symbol. And the status symbol makes for this uh, really big price increase uh, for this horn. And together with that, an even worse picture to me. This shows the number of rhinos that are killed every year. And up to 2007, nothing much was going on. About 14 average a year. And then something changed, and up to last year, there were a thousand rhinos killed. A thousand means that every 12 hours, a rhino is killed. And at this rate, there won't be any rhino any left in 10 years. So if I want to ch show my children this place, a rhino is, needs to be there. And at this rate, it's not possible anymore. In South Africa, they say they are at war, and they are losing this war. And you can see that happening here. So what we used to do to counter poaching, it's not working anymore. You can see that by the increase in what is happening here. So to figure out what is actually the problem, we moved to South Africa, because South Africa is the place where almost all drone, uh, rhinos live. 60% of them are in Kruger National Park, indicated in orange here. And if we compare Kruger National Park to the Netherlands, we see that they're almost the same in size. And if we take a look at the road network, you see in the Netherlands the highways, and in Kruger National Park, all the roads there. This makes it for the ranger that has to protect the rhino a really difficult task, because he has to observe the whole country by walking around, because the roads are not enough. And he doesn't know where the rhino is, he doesn't know where the poacher is, but still he has to protect the rhino from that poacher. What you need here, actually, this ranger, what he wants is a Google map. And that Google map needs to indicate where are these rhinos and where are these poachers, so that he can do his job. He knows where to go, he knows where to protect. To get that, we use drones. And these drones will go s help save the rhino. There are a few options to get uh, eyes in the sky, to get that picture for Google Maps. You've got the normal aircraft, takes two guys in there, and a lot of money to make the plane fly. There are military drones, which could do the job, but are still way too expensive. And then there are the model aircraft, like this one, like that one. And these ones are cheap, easy to use, but they still lack a bit of functionality. And that's what we're going to change. But first, let me show you what this drone already can do. This you can buy for about $300, and you Control it just with your phone. It's so easy to use, it's just so in innovative, that I can make every one of you fly this thing within five minutes.
to figure out what is exactly needed to solve this problem, because this can fly, but that's not enough. You can't, there are some steps in between to make it go to that Google Maps interface for the Ranger. I went to South Africa to f trigger some IDs to, con to check whether they will work, and I got talking with a guy named Vince. And this guy, he uh, trains rangers for a living. And he told me that yeah, South Africa is at war, and we are so badly losing that we are desperate to try anything. So that drone, yes, please. But the drone will work. But the question is if it is here tomorrow. Because if it's not here tomorrow, you will be too late. There won't be any rhino left to save when you, you're done building this drone. And that hit me quite hard. When I left that place, there was even a, pl a placard saying, if, you want, if, you, if you saw the image, and those pictures were there as well, of the killed rhinos. And it was saying, if you don't want to see this site, if you agree that this is not, if this should stop, then why isn't your name on this board? And, well, that got me thinking, because I wanted to stop this. I want my children to see this. But what can I do? I'm still a student. I don't have any time. I'm supposed to go start my graduation. So what? And luckily for me, there came this challenge along. And this challenge challenged everyone around the world to create a drone, a cheap one, like this one, to save the rhino. And this is a, well, the Wildlife Conservation UAV Challenge. And UAV here is a, another word for drone. And this made it possible for me to find these guys. And these guys, with these guys, we joined a team. We participate in this challenge to make sure that we can save the rhino. And these guys gave me the comfort and the trust, confidence, that we can actually build this drone. And then the only question still uh, that is left is, will we be in time? Let me tell you what exactly this drone will do. This drone will fly over Kruger National Park. And it will scan the ground looking for people and animals. If it finds one, it will know because there is a computer on board scanning all these images. And it selects the few of them that it thinks that, yes, this is something, this may be something, and that will be sent to a ground station. At that ground station, there will be a ranger checking whether the computer was right or not. If it was right, and it was an animal, for example, a rhino, it will tell the drone to go around the rhino, check the ground around it, and make that circle bigger and bigger and bigger, until the point that it will find a human, because the human are a threat to that rhino. And then, it, again, it makes a picture, sends it back to the ranger, and he will check, is this indeed a poacher? Is he supposed to be here? No, because it's at night. No, there are not supposed to be any tourists. The ranges we know are in different places, so this must be a poacher. Then the drone will stay with that poacher, keep following it, being such a high altitude that it won't be recognized, won't be heard or seen. And all the while, the rangers can close in because they know where they are now. And with a live video stream to that same Google Maps interface, all the rangers will find out how to approach these poachers to make sure that there are no bloodshed in the arrest, because we still don't want any killing. There will be no weapons on there, it's just information. Get that picture of, the, uh, of where these rhinos and poachers are. And with this system, this drone, we can build, we can help save the rhino. And that means that I can show my children that place that I once knew to be so great. And that means that your children have that chance as well. Thank you.